So when we are speaking of silver, we are speaking of redemption, we are speaking of salvation. It is related to Jesus. Is the one who redeems, is the one who saves. And showing that since the Old Testament, the people of God would hear the sound of the trumpet and they would be guided, they would be conducted by it. So there is a verse in the Bible that says the following, and then they will hear a voice that is from behind of you saying, that's the path, do not deviate from it, either for to the left or to the right. If we deviate to the right, which is man's understanding, then we fall. If we deviate to the left, we leave the project of God, we end up going straight from the path, we lose direction, we lose the target. So the trumpet, the sounding of the trumpet, the sound that comes out of the trumpet, since the Old Testament is the voice of the Holy Spirit that guides us, that conducts us, that alert us to the moment in which we are living. If it is a moment for us to stop and wait, or if it is a moment for us to give continuity to our walk. That's why he speaks about the sound of the two trumpets of silver. Two is also speaking about fellowship. So we, if we walk on the light in the same way that he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, with our brother and sister, and the blood of Jesus purified us, purifies us of everything. So walking on the light, walking on fellowship, is walking, listening to the sound of the trumpet of silver. That's why Nehemiah says, whenever you hear the sound of the shofar, the sound of the trumpet, then you should gather. So the sound is also to help us to gather, to cause us to congregate, because church means congregation. It is for us to congregate, to gather up. So the sound of the trumpet is being heard by the people of God, so that this people of God may gather up and so that these people of, of God may congregate. The brother, when he was praying, he spoke about this, so that the number of the saved may be completed, so that the church may depart, the church may be raptured. So the Bible, my brethren, says the following, you need to make two silver trumpets for the conclamation of the congregation from the towns. And here, there is a secret here. Because there is a secret. And that, that secret, the church knows. The signs, uh, like the song says, uh, are being fulfilled on the entire generation. The church moans and Darkness falls upon the world. That's what we're seeing. But there's a people that has a light. There is a people that is in the light. There's a people that is congregating. It's in fellowship with the Lord. There's a people that is listening the voice of the trumpet of silver. And here there is a secret. It says the, the following, my brethren. When you sound the trumpet, so then the whole congregation will congregate with you at the door of the congregation. So every sound was a sign, was an announcement, was an information that was given to the whole town, to the entire people of God. If two trumpets are sounded, where would the people of God go toward? The people of God is going to go toward the door of, of the door of congregation. Who is the door? Of course, the Lord Jesus. So, when the trumpet is sounded, twice, so in fellowship, the people is needs to go towards the door, needs to go towards Jesus. 
So it was the first sounding of the trumpet. The first sounding of the, are all those two trumpets, and the, the sounding of the trumpets are so that you may go to the door, because the door is the place where you go through. Because without shedding of blood, no one will be able to see the glory of God. I am the truth and the way and the life. Nobody goes to the Father but through me. So it was a gathering at the door. So this is the first sounding that of the trumpet that you and I, we all heard. When the trumpet sounded, our heard, we eyes, we ears have heard. So now it's time for us, for me to congregate now with the people of God. So from this day forward, I will walk according to the voice of my God, according to the order of God towards my life. Because now I met a God gathered at the door. Now I am at the door. I am at the presence of the Lord Jesus. Now I have access to, sanct to the sanctuary of God. When the trumpets are sounded, the whole congregation will come, come together at the door of the congregation. But only, when only one trumpet is sounded, only the princes and the heads of the thousands of Israel will congregate. On the first sounding of the trumpet, number 10. And, uh, I started on Nehemiah, but now I'm on the book of Numbers, chapter 10. I w went to Nehemiah, but now, uh, as just as a reference, now we are on book of Numbers. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 20. The God is going to fire for us. Nehemiah 4.20. So it's too loud. So when it was just one sound, it was for, for us to, for only the princes and the heads of the townships of Israel would congregate, because in Israel, there was the subdivisions inside of the people, like we have in our church, the groups of assistants. So it was like the responsible for the thousands, the responsible for the hundreds, and also the responsible for the fifties. I found out mistaken. This is those are the subdivisions. So when the first trumpet was sounded, was so that those responsible for the groups inside of the congregation would gather up so that they would hear instructions from the Lord, guidelines for the people of God. And that's what is important because it is speaking of instructions that the people of the Lord already was aware of to meet up at the door of the congregation so that they would all hear the sound. But in order to hear more instructions, it was just one sound of the trumpet. And so the leaders and the responsible for the people would gather up to receive this information. It was not the entire people that would receive this specific information. So if you look towards the church, that's what happens there. There, there is information the whole church receives, but there is information that is just for a small group. But they are responsible to guide the small groups in the midst of the congregation. So it speaks about the intercession group that sometimes the church is not aware of, but the congregation becomes aware. And this is those those leaders they know how to receive and to execute the instruction from the Lord in the midst of the flock and the congregation. They congregate the princes, the heads of Israel. That's why we have a presbyterian in Brazil. When they meet there and after instruction via satellite, sometimes we we don't understand it clearly and sometimes don't even agree with, right? But it is an instruction that was given 
to the Lord, but from the Lord to them. And we, as a congregation, we need to be following the instructions from the Lord. It was not given to us, but was given to the ones who are responsible to conduct the flock of the Lord, the people of God, towards the land, the promise, the land where it flows honey and milk. So these people was being conducted to the promised land. So we are being conducted to our own land, which is not the state of Israel, the nation of Israel, which is being greatly blessed by Lord, by the Lord, but our land is another one. Our land is eternal uh, um, Jerusalem. And when the, the trumpets are sounded, then the towns are going to depart. They are from the part of the east. So when the trumpet sounded twice uh, in a different way, that, so that it was another instruction. So if you go through the chapter 10 uh, of the book of Numbers, you notice that the sounds were, the trumpets are sound out, uh, sounded uh, in a short burst once or twice, but the people was aware of it. Every time it sounded, you didn't have to tell your neighbor what kind of sound is this because they would all know that they were all trained. And my brethren, the Bible says that there will come a moment in which we'll all be uh, taught by God. If, uh, that's how, what the Bible says. God will teach us all. He's teaching us how to walk in His presence and to discern the moment in which we are, spiritually speaking, which is the moment, moment before the departure of the church. So that's why we're going to back to Nehemiah, the moment of the reconstruction, of the restoration. What is to restore? Is to make it all new again. Reconstruction is to reconstruct what was had been destroyed. The people of Israel is being reconstructed. The project of God is being reconstructed. When we look today to Israel, you see Israel being reconstructed. The signs are all there. The resources are all there being made available to them. In the moment when the Lord gives an order there, the instruction for the reconstruction of the third temple for Israel, right? The return of the Messiah to Israel, the sounding of the other trumpets to Israel. So in the same way that the Lord has moved in Israel, the Lord is also has manifested himself in the midst of the church, the heavenly Israel that the Bible says that gave him the power to be made children of God, the ones who believe in God. Israel, they are really children of God because God has elected them to, for this. But we are children of God from the moment in which we believe in the Jew man called Jesus. When we believe in salvation Christ Jesus, we became become once at that point, we receive from the Lord the power of being made children of God to the ones who believe in the Lord. It's not according to man's flesh, but uh, it is the will of God. We're not Jews by inheritance because of the DNA from generation to generation. But we are Jews because we believe that the God of the Jews, Jehovah, the God creator of heaven and earth, has accepted us as adopted children, as his people. And lamb of his uh, pastures. So when we read Nehemiah, we are relieving the history of Nehemiah in our days. In the same way as in the past, the Lord had given instruction for the people to be paying attention to the sound of the trumpets. At this moment, we are living 
the same moment in which the Lord has given us instructions so that we may be paying attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit, being paying attention to the sound and the trumpet, to the signs that are, that are being fulfilled throughout the earth. On Sunday school, we were going to speak about this, about the, those details. And the sound, there were signs, there are alerts, the sounds of the trumpets are conclamation so that the brethren or the congregation to get ready for the departure. For the moment, the, the Bible says that we, we have been waiting for more than 2,000 years for the moment in which we are called by the Lord. Just before the last trumpet, the dead will resurrect and we who are dead we will be raptured and will be with the Lord forever in, in the clouds. So in the days of Nehemiah, there was this concern. The walls were being reconstructed, the walls and the, the, the city and the walls, the brethren already know this story. We thought, spoke about this many times. And the brethren were, they were, the Jews were there doing the work in one hand, they had the tools and the uh, on the other they had the, the weapons the the builders had uh, swords they were all adjusted the sword word was there the sword what what is the sword the sword is the word of god it needs to be ready because the resource that we have is the word of god Heaven may pass, everything may pass, but the word will never pass. The guarantee that we are going to enter into eternity is the word of God. God placed boldness in our, our hearts through the precious blood of Jesus that guarantee uh, this to us. It is the word of God. So the word of God needs to be connected with us. And Jesus, uh, twice he alerted us about this, examined the scriptures because they speak about me, because uh, you, through it, you have eternal life. And uh, in another passage, he says, you make mistakes because you, because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. Once a brother uh, came to a pastor another pastor then and said, I trust in you very much. And he said, my son, are you crazy? I, I don't trust myself. You know, my brother, because it is written on the word. Cursed is the man who trusts on another man. Do you understand? There's a verse in the Bible that says the following. Why is man is always complaining? When things are wrong with me, Sometimes I want to complain about my co-work, about my wife, my son, the brother in the church, or the congregation. But what does the Bible speak about this? What does the Bible speak about this? Why is man always complaining? Man complains about his own. Man complains about his own sin. So when the brother is complaining, he's complaining about the mistake he made. Isn't it true? So the Bible says that it's impossible for God to lie. So this is true. So when I'm complaining, I'm complaining about the, um, the mistake that I made myself. Because the Bible speaks about Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We, if you look towards Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, my brother, you never make mistake. You Everything will go right. So in those days, the work was extensive. They were many were far away from it. Uh, another one, but the word says that when the trumpet is sounded, you need to gather up. You need to come close. So what does it mean to come close? Have you thought about this? We are here all together close to one another. To gather up means to congregate, to be in fellowship. So at this moment of the sound of the trumpet, the church needs to be in fellowship with the Lord and with the brethren. 
because it doesn't exist fellowship with the Lord if there is no fellowship with the brethren. Oh, but I, I, uh, I have a deep fellowship with God. And how about your neighbor? Uh, you will be lying to yourself. This is the worst lie that man can can do is lie to himself. We are the church of Laodicea, the last church. The Laod Laodicea church says the following, I'm rich, but I lack nothing. That's the church that we, that we are. We, I'm rich and I lack no nothing. Many times we are like this, I'm rich. I don't like anything. Everything is all right with me. I'm ready to go to eternity. On the supper of the Lord, the Lord said the following, examine man himself. And now man should take part of the supper of the Lord, congregate to gather up. Because if you eat of the bread or drink of the cup in an unworthy fashion, you drink and eat to your own condemnation. That's why in the midst of, of you, there are so many who are sick and weak, right? And if you watch the previous Sunday schools, it says the following that the sick cannot enter into heaven. <laughs> we need to be healed, cured. We need to be healthy. The spiritual life of the Christian needs to be healthy. If I have a headache, I have an infirmity, a cancer, this is body. The body will be left behind if you, whether you're healthy or not. But the spirit needs to be, the spirit needs to be healthy in order to enter into eternity. And Jesus there, on the seventh church, he speaks about this. I advise you that you buy from me the, the gold that was burnt on fire, the eye drops on your eyes, garments so that you may dress yourself up. So it is an alert from the Lord. It is an information the Lord is giving to the church that is passing by. So, Nehemiah, we're going to work on, we're going to work on the reconstruction, but the instruments and the weapons need to be at our hands. Why? Because the enemies that at this moment rise up to interfere on the plan and the project of God to, for my life, for your life, for our lives. So then the Lord said the following, and the, when you hear the sound of the trump, then you gather up with us. So that, what is the purpose for this? Why am I going to gather up when I hear the sounding of the trumpet? What is the purpose? What is going to happen if I get together? What is the purpose, the object of this? What am I going to receive as a benefit if I, if I gather up, when I hear the sounding of the trumpet, when I congregate, when I'm in fellowship with the brethren? Do you know why, my brethren? So that our God may fight for us. Where my help will come from. My help comes from the Lord. Psalm, Psalms 121, but on Psalms 123 it says, our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So there is a help, the rescue for the church. There is a resource for the church so that we need to be continually congregated in fellowship with, in the body, with, for, praying for one another and sanctifying for one another so that God may fight on our behalf. We are in a month in which we are praying for the work abroad, of work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the 
the people in Brazil were praying for the people in the United States and abroad, and here in the United States we're praying for Brazil or for other nations. And this is is to be uh, to have be in fellowship to congregate so that the Lord may be fighting for the work here in the United States, the work of the Holy Spirit in Brazil, and the work of the Holy Spirit in everywhere in the world, so that the Lord may give us the victory. Because no one is able to reach victory. The Christian does not reach victory without the Lord. No one is able to reach. The Christian does not reach victory but uh, without the Lord. Even the children sing this. The Lord is our victory. We are more than victorious. Why? Because of the one who loved us. And because that's why. Because of the Lord. No, not even the death and the principalities can separate us from from the Lord. For to the one can separate us to uh, the ones who are in fellowship that hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The church will be victorious. So that was the object of Nehemiah was to wake up the people for that moment. And the act, the object of the Holy Spirit is the same to wake us up for this moment of reconstruction. His project is to rebuild. In the time of Jer the Jerusalem, it was destroyed and, not, and then it was reconstructed. And the project of God in our lives is to reconstruct us. Oh, but it was never destroyed. But you're mistaken. It was destroyed. The blessing in our life. There were moments in our life where the enemy came and broke the walls and destroy the protection from God. But the Lord delivered us. He protected us. He forgave our failures and our sins and our transgressions. And the first thing that Nehemiah did was to ask forgiveness to the Lord because he wanted the project of God was not only to reconstruct Jerusalem, but his own life, his home, his family. That's why there are recommendations here. Each person in front of his own house. We need to be in front of our own house, houses because this is a recommendation from the Lord. So the brothers, the wife and the husband, the children and the grandchildren, our parents, we need to gather up, gather up because it's a recommendation from the Lord. So then when at the sound of the trumpet, you gather up with us. So it is a gather up with Nehemiah, and it's a gathering with the Holy Spirit. So once in Brazil was participating on a prophetic service, and the Lord has shown that a brother in the church, the, the Lord was showing that that man was in the church, but he was present, but his, his heart was suspended, but it was lifted up. It was His heart was in another place. What does he mean? And the discernment was given. Physically, he was there. But his heart, his feelings were someplace else. And there is a verse in Psalms that says the following If I forget you, O Jerusalem, my tongue may attach, be attached to the roof of my mouth. If I if uh, Jerusalem is not my joy, if somebody asked. To, a Jew, what Jerusalem is for that person? He answered, "Jerusalem is the, my the dream of my dream." So the dream of the church, the congregation, is the heavenly Jerusalem. So in no moment we can forget about it, because if we forget about the heavenly Jerusalem, the project that God has for our lives. Our tongue will be uh, glued to our uh, ceiling of our mouth. And you know when it happens? When we get too thirsty. And there's a song that says, My soul thirsts for you. No, my, my soul sighs for you, Lord. My soul thirsts for the living God. So we can never forget about Jerusalem, the plan and the project of God for our lives. We can never have our lives and suspended between heaven and earth. Because in the book of Psalms, it speaks about this. So 
So it was suspended between heaven and earth because they were in Babylon. The Jewish people was in Babylon. They were away from Jerusalem. And when they were in Babylon, they, they were missing the Lord. But they could not return because they were taken captive to Babylon. And these people that returned was the people that was captive in Babylon. And then the Lord brought them back to their land for the reconstruction of Jerusalem and the Temple of Jerusalem. My brethren, we, we were captive in Babylon. Each one, all of us, were captive in Babylon. But one day, the Lord took us out of there and brought us into His land, to His kingdom, to His project, so that the work of the Lord may be reconstructed in our lives. And in the same way that in the past, when the two trumpets were sounded, they went to the door of the congregation. In the same way, that's what happened with us. When the trumpet sounded for our lives, when we heard the sound of the trumpet, we came to the door of the congregation, to the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that we'd be, be able to go through it and have a life geared towards the Lord and get ready, reconstruct our spiritual life so that we inhabit and reside and live in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a song now.
Anybody else? The children that have a song to sing. Church will stand up. I'm going to pray for the children in the lessons. One of the deacons can pray. I will pray. I pray to you, for the blood of Jesus. As the teachers, we we'll pray so that your good hands may be laying upon them. Send angels, Lord to camp around them, giving them all the deliverance. We ask that you may be revealing yourself. And this age so young, the children in the mirrors, give your grace to them, Lord. I will also pray for the teachers, Lord. Give them wisdom, as you have already done, Lord and that your grace may be poured out upon them so that they may be able to deliver a message to the Lord and that the voice of the Lord may echo in the heart of your children or your small ones, Lord. And they may grow up with the fear of the Lord, Lord. Give your grace a blessing at work, at home. Reproach and infirmity, Lord. Because you bless your your the teachers bless their work and their plans for the future, Lord. Take care of all things, Lord. We'll pray to you in the name of Jesus. You can you can stay there. Marks. We're gonna doing the prayer to the children. The Lord has shown that the teachers were the the Lord picked up the children by their hands and brought them to an open field where there were there was a flow of honey in abundance abundance and the teachers would receive would, the teachers would pick up from this honey and taught the children to pick up from the honey and they ate of the honey and it was so much honey that they brought the, uh, it to their homes and the children would give to the family members and to the ones who were still not saved and we, they would rejoice from the sweetness and they wanted to know the source of this honey. Give the discernment, brother. I see that what the teachers are learning with the class, uh, what, what the teachers are delivering, which is the word, the honey, to the children. And also, whoever teaches is one who learns the most. So what the, what the, the teachers are learning from the word does not stay here. So, but it, it should also be delivered to the, their family members, to the neighbors, so that they may also taste of this honey. That's what I understand. Amen. The bread that was shared is the honey that was shared. Amen. It is sufficient to sweeten up your soul. Because uh, you're living a moment in which the soul is bitter, it's saddened in the word of God like there is a song in Brazil that says 
the words of life and honey to the Lord. How how does it go? Only you has have eternal life. I cannot say in the world, but you are faithful and not despised one who will seek you. That's why I cry and I implore. Never set me apart from your love. It's a song from our brother there in our city. Amen. So that's what it is. When the honey is shared and clarify your vision. Remember the brother called Jonathan? He was uh, on the battle when he, he when he saw uh, uh, honey, he put on the tip of his sword and put on his mouth and his his eyes were opened up. He saw once again the project of God, the light of God. So when we do this, we notice that salvation is sweet. For us, it is sweet because the bitter, bitterness was left on Calvary with the Lord and save, or our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Lord is giving this resource to us and also to the children because from them is the kingdom of God. From the mouth of the children comes out the perfect praise. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet there, you should gather. When the trumpet was sounded, the people would gather up at the door of uh, at the tent of the congregation. And the Lord will fight for us and will bring us to His eternity. And it will be in, in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for, for this moment of fellowship with your Holy Spirit. We implore, Lord, that your blessing may once again fall upon the entire your entire people throughout the earth. Make us pay attention to your voice and getting us ready to enter into heaven and to our eternity. Give us a blessing during this day, protecting our lives, revealing also your project and your project for the service tonight. Take your people home uh, in peace. We will pray, pray in the name of Jesus. In your name you say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brother may be seated. The service is over. We have a meeting with Group C and to all the peace of the Lord.